Hey, my name is John McLaughlin, and you are watching Marina Boy TV. Okay, so was music something you always wanted to pursue? Was it something you knew you were going to get into as a career? Um, well, I mean, I always, I always knew I wanted to do music. Like, I remember being like five years old and watching like VHS videos of uh, Billy Joel and like just wanting to be him. Plus, he wore like blazers with t shirts, which I thought was the Very coolest happy. thing ever because my dad always wore blazers with. So he was like, I want I wanted to do it, but you know, like when I was a kid, I wasn't really thinking career. Right. But I just always wanted to do music, yeah, for the most part. So were you one of those kids that had to do piano lessons as a child? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Yes, I, I did have to do lessons from, you know, about the time I was about five, um, which I wanted to start because my I have an older sister, older brother, and they were both awesome piano players. And, so I was the youngest of three, I wanted to do it, so I was like, sign me up, and then they were like, okay, you gotta practice every week, and I wasn't paying attention when they said that, and so <laughs> I got involved, and then I hated it, always. Like, I hated it, until I got into high school, and then I quit for a while, but luckily I got I got back into it in college. That's good. Yeah. Good, otherwise you wouldn't be where you are now, it's here. We would not be here. Exactly. And I wouldn't know about poutine. I know, but actually, just we're just, I, because we are in Toronto right now, and um, where are you from? Indiana. Indiana, so yeah. I guess in Indiana, they have not been fortunate we don't enough have to experience this. poutine. Yeah. So, so. I, we've, I've been promoting our one true Canadian dish, <laughs> and uh, it's how it's going to change it. Right after life. this, I'm going to get, I'll probably get two servings. You should, you should. Yeah. You'll, you'll regret it if you do. Because it sounds pretty healthy. It, it is. sounds like the more you eat, the healthier you are. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, no carbs. Um, <laughs> so. You actually just recently, I guess, before this album was released, you um, parted ways with your label. I did. Are you independent now? Is that what you're doing, your own thing? I am. I'm independent at the moment. Um, and this happened earlier this year. And, you know, it was a, it was, the, this new record is called Forever If Ever, because it took like two and a half years to, to make. And a good two years of that was kind of working with the label. And, you know, I, kind of, I had my ideas and they had their ideas. and all that kind of stuff. So eventually we parted ways and I still have a ton of friends that, that work there but it just wasn't working out. And um, But, uh, you know, it was kind of a frustrating time but, but being on my own and making this record this summer with my band was like the most therapeutic, amazing experience. I've never had so much fun in the studio. I don't know if I've ever had so much fun like just with music, you know, making this record. So. Um, it's by far my favorite record that I've ever what done. What was the difference in your process this time, without with having like being independent, not having the label kind of I guess well, I, being involved creatively at all? The label wasn't there to critique, which was great. But I did. I also produced it myself, which I had never done, and um, it's a lot of work. It's like a lot of work. So every, I mean, it, it, it took me a couple months to make it, and I mean, I, it was all I thought about. I'm sure, like when I would be hanging out with my wife or friends, I would just be like staring at my drink, thinking <laughs> about like tracks and stuff, you know. So it was it definitely, fun to be around. I was so fun this summer. My yeah, people loved me. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it gave me a, a huge respect for, you know, the great producers that I've worked with, you know, on these other records. Um, and it was just great. It was a great time for my band and I. It was a really great time for me artistically and musically and, and I, you know, well, hopefully a, we have a good record. As a songwriter, you were, I guess, writing more yourself this time because before I think that was right. kind of one of the issues you were having was, was co-writing, is that what? Right. You know, I mean, when, when you're with a major label, they need, they need big numbers, you know, and so um, a lot of times if they don't have a song that they feel like will work at radio, then, you know, it doesn't really matter. It could be a great song. It could be like, you know, the greatest B-side, deep track song ever, but if they don't feel like they can push it at pop radio and and make some money, you know, they're in the music business, so, you know, it doesn't it doesn't quite work. So you find yourself, or I found myself, you know, writing with a lot of, you know, hit maker writers, you know, which is, which is fine. There, there were some, I think we got some great songs out of that over, over the past five, six years. But um, with this record, it being my third record, and I just really knew what I wanted more than ever. And, um, and I didn't want to go off of, I didn't want to be a slave to whatever was popular at that time, you know. If it's like hip-hop, dance, music, 
then you write hip hop dance music if it's like, you know, you know, I don't know, rootsy rock. You know, I just didn't wanna I didn't wanna create music based off of something that existed out of my own control, so